Okay, ready? Let's get it going. Let's get it going now. Let's move on. As we move on now, we transition into sexual related disorders. Overall, there are two main areas of sexual related disorders. Some of you have expressed interest in becoming a sex therapist, or at least that's what you said in class. So, if you wanted to become a sex therapist, what you would normally have to do is become a licensed professional counselor and then specialize in sexual related disorders. There are two main areas of sexual related disorders that you can see here. There can be sexual dysfunctions or there can be paraphilic disorders. How are those two different? Sexual dysfunctions have a little bit more to do with uh, sexual responses, how your body mostly responds. And if we take into account the deviance, the stress, dysfunction, the three Ds of psychological disorders, well, those body responses become dysfunctional over time and are impeding your normal sexual response system. For example, for men, you have uh, erectile dysfunction, which is very, very common. It can be so common out of a dysfunction that exists that it's established that men, about 90% of men may experience at least once in their lifetime a small problem with an erectile dysfunction. This, by the way, means that you cannot get an erection and there can be a lot of different factors behind it. Um, maybe low testosterone, maybe an injury to the genital area, might be stress, anxiety, a series of factors. For example, a sex therapist would know if this problem is psychological or physical. For example, when we men go to sleep at night and our brains go through the, through the sleep cycles, naturally we tend to have an erection in the middle of the night. If a man cannot get an erection while trying to have intercourse, but the man can have an erection while sleeping, then you know that the problem is psychological, not physical. You see, you see what I mean? For women, one of the most common disorders is female orgasmic disorder. How common can it be? There was a big mass massive survey taken by the Kinsey Institute, which is like the main uh, sex related the research institute that existed in the United States based on in Indiana. Um, on a big survey that was conducted, they established a conclusion that about 20% of women have rarely, this is 20% of women that are sexually active or that have been sexually active, rarely or never have experienced an orgasm. And if you're sexually active and you have never or rarely experienced an uh, or never experienced an orgasm, man, that sucks. I don't know about you all, but I mean, that, that sucks. Well, anyways, my opinion to the side, let's get it going now. Here, what is very interesting about those sexual dysfunctions, hypoactive sexual disorder, which is a lack of sexual interest or a lack of desire, hypoactive, is considered a sexual dysfunction. On the other hand, the opposite of hypoactive is hyperactive or hypersexuality, which is more like a sexual addiction. Oddly enough, the DSM does not take that one as a psychological disorder. Very, very interesting, worth your time, worth your read. And as, as we shift now to paraphilic disorders, paraphilia, I remember a professor of mine saying, paraphilia is really the kinky side of sex. It's a... Uh, Paraphilic disorders are sexual disorders, but they have to do more with the mind and not so much with sexual responses in the, in the body. This is more about, more about mental, serious mental disorders. And there's a long, long list of them. For example, fetishism. What happens with people that have odd fetishes? What happens with people that are so intrigued and so driven by feet? What happens to people that are into things that are not normal, what happens to people that are into, into statues, what happens to people that are into, into shoes, uh, what happens to people that are, I told you a thing before, the most odd one that I ever read of was a guy that was into bicycles. Why? Why? And then some of those become very serious. 
if you have sophilia, which is a sexual attraction to animals, that's very serious. Necrophilia, which is a sexual attraction to, to bodies, to corpses, that's very serious. And then you might have heard about pedophilia, sexual attraction to children. Those paraphilia become very serious. There's a long list of them. Some of the most common ones are uh, sexual masochism, sexual sadism, uh, fraudism, exhibitionism, voyeurism, you name it. You might have been a victim of one and not even be aware of it. To really quick wrap this topic up, there was one time that I was a victim of a voyeur. Voyeurism is a person that likes to watch peak. Especially someone that is naked, someone that is getting undressed, someone that is engaging in some kind of like sexual act, and this person doesn't want to be seen, this person is just peaking. So there was this one time that I went to the movies with my girlfriend at the time. This happened more than 10 years ago. More than 10 years ago, I was maybe like 20. And while I go in the middle of the movie to the, to the restroom, I hate to mess and go to the restroom in the middle of the movie, but I had to, so I ran. And there's this long line of empty urinals. Guys would know when you go to the restroom and there's a line of empty urinals, if there's no barrier separating the urinals, there's an unspoken rule. If there's a long line of empty urinals, use the one that is not next to you, but at least leave one in space, you know? A spoken rule that we have, guys. So I go in, long line of empty urinals, no barriers in the middle, and I'm just using one. And this man, older man, comes in. And this all happened like that. This man comes in and uses a urinal right next to mine. And as I'm finishing, I uh, happened to notice that this man right next to me actually came in with, you know, with his pants somewhat unbuttoned. And he's not really using the restroom, but he's actually masturbating. And he's actually looking at me while he was doing that. This will happen like this. My immediate reaction then is I'm in shock. And it will happen like that. He's then trying to touch my face. So I just remember like pushing him, he fell to the floor, fell to the floor, we'll go out of there running, go back into the movie theater, grab my, with my girlfriend at the time, grab her in, I'm like, hey, we gotta go. She's like, why? I'm just like, I just pushed an old guy in the bathroom. She didn't do anything about it afterwards, so that is very serious. I'm a 20 year old guy that someone could defend, fend off this, but what happens if instead is my 10 year old self? Those dysfunctions can be very serious. They should not be taken lightly, but it's very hard for a person with a paraphilic disorder to seek help. What is much more common to see a person with a sexual dysfunction to seek help. If you become a sex therapist, those cases will be more common, while those ones over here will be the most challenging ones. Read about the rest of the disorders, and this is a very interesting area of study for abnormal psychology. All right.